Okay, so I picked up my piece of vinyl corner post here. Um, basically what this is, is just a piece of vinyl that will be um, covering our corner here. Uh, and it basically, it provides two pieces of J trim, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but once we put this on the corner, our siding will be able to slide into this little groove here and hide all of our edges. So there's one on this side and one on this side. Um, but I have one piece here already pre-cut and I'm gonna show you how to lay it out here. Um, but it's just a little bit easier to show you what I'm talking about. Um, when we cut our corner post, um, we can't just cut it flat up top because basically it would look like this. Um, and then we have an area that's not covered um, by this corner post um, and rain would be able to get in to the top of that post there. So what we wanna do is take some careful measurements here and basically cut out that profile uh, to match. So now when we go ahead and put this post up, it sits nice and tight up to um, the soffit. Also comes around and sits nice and tight up to our uh, soffit on this side. So what I've done is first we need to figure out where we're gonna start our uh, siding down below. So um, from our framing stage, uh, underneath our tar paper here is our mud, or excuse me, our Tyvek is our mud sill here. And remember we wanted to drop our siding just an inch or two below our sill so we can completely cover up this um, gap that we've made um, between foundation and wood framing. So we've dropped our, the start of our siding down about an inch and that actually makes um, from the bottom of our siding up to the bottom of our soffit exactly eight feet. So from the start of our uh, siding all the way up this corner to this side of our soffit, um, we're gonna run it right at eight feet. Um, so uh, what I've done is I've actually already installed our starter strip um, and I have a piece here somewhere. Basically what starter strip does is it gives us a little lip here um, to be able to click our siding into. Um, if we didn't have this, uh, we're gonna, we would then install our first row here and basically our bottom would just be flapping loose here. Uh, so this gives us that little ledge to be able to click our siding into, uh, making sure that our bottom is nice and secure to the bottom of the wall. Um, so I've actually, went ahead and dropped this down to the level of eight feet. Um, and the way I've done that was, I've already installed one corner post on this side. Um, so I just went ahead and measured down to double check. Our corner post came out to the right height, which is right at eight feet, which is good. So now I've ran this starter strip from the bottom of our corner post um, to where the bottom of our corner post is gonna lie over here on this side. I've snapped a line and then ran this starter strip um, nice and straight across the bottom. Um, and everything that we install uh, when it comes to vinyl siding, whether it's the J trim, the corner post, the starter strip, um, the utility strips, everything's gonna be installed with these uh, roofing nails here. So I just went every 16 inches um, and nailed off that starter strip. So to get back to our corner post here, um, the way we're gonna lay this out, I have a corner post here ready for us. And what we would do is uh, take our tape measure. Uh, we're not gonna measure from the top because that's where we're gonna do all of our cuts. And we want a nice factory edge here on the bottom. Um, so I always take my measurements uh, straight from the bottom. So what we'll do, and normally I'm working on the other side here, so I'm a little backwards. Um, we wanna take our corner post and kind of picture it on the wall. And we know that this side is that side we're gonna be making that cut. Um, so just so I don't forget, All right, um, just so I don't forget, I'm gonna make a mark here just to know that I'm working on this side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and attach my tape measure to the bottom. 
come up here and make a mark at eight feet. So what this uh, line represents again is gonna be the bottom of that side soffit. And I'm just gonna make a line from the corner um, back just about an inch. Um, essentially what we're trying to do, if we look from the end here, um, we have this thickness from the back side of this J trim to the front side of this corner trim. We're trying to mimic that thickness to the front of this corner post here. And I can tell you that that thickness is um, an inch and a sixteenth. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a mark at an inch and a sixteenth, and then come up here a little bit, make another mark, and I'll start to draw this line here. So now this line is gonna be the part that's coming up behind this soffit box here. So we just drew that eight foot line coming across here and then came back to, um, to account for this thickness worth of J trim. Um, so now we need to figure out the height from the bottom of our soffit up to the um, corner here of our um, soffit of the fly rafter. And I took that measurement already and I know it's six inches. So from our eight foot mark, we're gonna come up six inches. And now we're gonna put the pitch of the roof on, which again, we have a 12-12 pitch. So that's gonna be a 45 degree angle. We'll just line that up and make that mark. So we have the front laid out. The only thing left to do then is to square off the corner on this side. And then we would be able to cut that line out with a pair of tin snips and we'd have a corner post just like this one uh, ready to be installed. Um, so that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so we have our cut out piece of corner trim here. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and install it. So um, the biggest tip with installing um, corner post is to just do um, the top first, then move to the middle and go down to the bottom. And you want to make sure that you're just eyeballing it square to the building. And what I mean um, by that is you can easily put this corner post on and then accidentally squish it. Um, so now we're obviously not um, per or square to the wall. Uh, so what we wanna do is just kinda loosely put it up there and just kinda move it back and forth making sure every nail we put in, we're kind of eyeballing that it's nice and square to the building. Um, if you don't really watch where you're going with it, um, you, your top might be nice and neat, but then your bottom might be wrapped around um, the corner and it just won't look very nice. So this is one of those things where um, you just kind of have to take your time and kind of play with it and make sure that it looks nice and neat before you move on. So the first step we're gonna do here is come up to the top and I like to um, kind of play with the angle here to begin with um, just because once you get this right you can kind of move the corner post uh, to wherever you need it to be. So the cut looks good um, and when installing any vinyl product if you can see these holes um, wherever our nails go are elongated. That's because vinyl trim needs to be able to expand and contract. Um, so most nails that you do in vinyl siding, you just want to hit the nail um, so the head just touches the vinyl. You don't want to drive it nice and tight because we have to be able to let um, the vinyl expand and contract. If you nail it tight, it's gonna buckle on you and it won't look good over time. So the one exception to that rule is this very top nail on um, corner posts. Um, basically because if you don't nail it tight, your corner posts will keep falling on you. So you can get it into place here. I'm gonna put that nail all the way to the top in that groove. And I'm just gonna uh, tack it for this, uh, for this second here. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to the middle here. Temporarily remove my ladder. 
And I'm gonna move this around, and again, before I actually put it into place, I'm gonna kinda eyeball it from both directions, make sure we're nice and square. And it looks pretty good right there. So now I'm gonna put this nail in the middle of this slot. And again, I'm just gonna tack it into place. Now you notice I'm not driving these nails um, all the way. Um, we would put them a lot tighter than this, um, but um, chances are that you're gonna have to make a few adjustments um, before you actually have this in the right spot. It just makes it a lot easier to pull a nail if you need to. All right, so I'm gonna be looking at the bottom, make sure it's square and tack it into place on this side. Okay, then I'm gonna move my ladder to the other side here. And I come to this side, eyeball it square, and then put a nail in. Come back down to the middle. Just it as needed. Okay. Put another nail in. And then finally one more at the bottom. Okay, so we have it pinned in place. Um, one thing you kind of want to do is just take a step back um, and kind of take a look at it. Um, it's kind of hard to see it up close. Um, so. Just kind of walk around all edges and kind of just see if you have a good, a good corner here. Make sure it's nice and square, which we look pretty decent. Okay, so if your nails look good, um, then you can go ahead and nail them off. And again, um, I'm just nailing it just so it's lightly touching the vinyl because again, we want to make sure that it has some room to shift here. So go ahead and just tap them all in. So then this last nail here, this is that one I said it can kind of break the rules. You just want to make sure your corner post is all the way up tight. And that one nail you can hit tight so that way your corner post doesn't fall. Um, and then the rest of it's allowed to move. So we got this one installed here. Um, I would go back and put a nail about every 16 inches into our nail strip here, um, and then firmly nail off this corner post. And then after we do that, we're ready to um, move on to our other trim pieces.